time to go live on Spaced Out Weekend. Thirteen, please. Oh, hi, Kevin. <coughs> oh, is that the time? Kevin, my friend, don't you find that watch just a little bit loud? <coughs> Well, I certainly hope our buddy Bumblefoot is playing when we get there. Oh, you stinky big bundle of hair. I said Bumblefoot, not Bigfoot. Oh, it's going to be a long night. It's time to head to the 13th floor of the old log cabin for Spaced Out Weekend with James Tyson. You can tweet James at James Tyson SOR. You can find him on Instagram, Spaced Out Weekend, as well as on Facebook. On YouTube, our channel is Spaced Out Radio Show. And you can check out our website, spacedoutradio.com. And now, perched high in his captain's chair, way above the clouds, here's James Tyson. We're the people have taken over. The people are little brother Standing by to dethrone each other Watching you and watching me Paranoid, the lens is our weapon Desensitized in our lust for attention Democratized by our voyeur obsessions Watching you and watching me Slaves to perfection Don't let them project you as you are Welcome, everybody, to Spaced Out Weekend. Still broadcasting, but a little new digs here in Uncle Jabot's cabin on the 13th floor of the Spaced Out Radio Network in the paranormal portals of the lower left Canadian coast. And is little brother watching? Thanks to Bumblefoot for his intro music, and I absolutely love it, but I'm worried about this little brother watching us. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to take your brain for a bit of a jog. Imagine having the ability to not only see extraterrestrials, but uh, kind of attract them, where they're following you for the rest of your life. Now, what would like something like that be? Having to look over your shoulder all the time, not having a really good sleep at night? Well, we have Lynn Williams with us tonight. She is a psychic transformational life and spiritual guide coach. She has been an empath and a Claire Cognit causing it. She, <laughs> she knows things uh, since she was a child. She utilizes these gifts to build several businesses from scratch and to help her become a top senior management recruiter in the corporate world for 25 years as she was able to accurately ex- assess whether a candidate was the right person for the job based on the unseen parts of the personality. Since her profound spiritual awakening of 2010 by extraterrestrials, whereby her other psychic gifts of feeling, seeing, and hearing into other realms was instantly activated, Lynn has focused her life on helping others to awaken their inner gifts and heal from emotional, mental, and physical trauma. Her ability to connect with and feel the emotions of people, animals, and combined with her healing hands and voice has helped numerous people and animals live happier and more fulfilled lives. Lynn is gifted with insight and also the ability to activate awakenings within people with her voice. She downloads messages for her clients directly from source and has helped many people resolve and heal from issues that have plagued them for much of their lives. She also works with people, pets, and horses as an energy healer. Now, since 2003, Lynn has coached and guided a variety of clients with finding the right career, job, transition, and uh, work-life balance, obtaining optimal health, creating better relationships, and maneuvering through the confusion and challenges of spirituality awakening, 
with all of the changes that happen spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. She has spent thousands of hours studying or experiencing a multitude of subjects, metaphysical, spiritual, ascension, UFOs, and extraterrestrial related. As such, clients come to Lynn for assistance with the following types of issues. Learning how to remove their own alien implants. Entities, thus eliminating pain, disease, and interference. Help with discovering their life mission and why they are here on Earth at this time. Navigating the relationship challenges when one person is awake and the other one is asleep. Creating action plans and a step for clients to leave the corporate rat race and live a more simplified life. A desire to change careers, yet they have no idea how to translate their current skills into a new field. They believe that they may have been abducted by ETs, yet no one to talk to it about and confirm their experiences. She also helps them open their spiritual gifts or takes their existing gifts to the next level. How to eat, how to live, how to more healthily, uh, a more healthy way that will support their bodies and minds and open their gifts more. General questions about all things spiritual for which they have been seeking answers, yet uh, had no one they could talk to about these secret matters. Lynn has a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Connecticut in Human Resources, Personal Behavior, and attended the Coaches Training Institute in 2003, where she became a certified life coach and completed her Reiki Level 1 and 2 training from a 10th degree master teacher in 2011 and if we have any more time left we'll invite lynn over to <laughs> spaced out weekend hello lynn how are you i'm fine james wow that i know quite, that you was did... quite an intro <laughs> yeah we're going to take a couple commercial breaks now and then we'll we'll <laughs> sign off oh yeah you have quite the intro you've got quite the uh, background if you've been doing this for a while and one of the things that that's like jumps out at me when I read these things and I'm looking at it, you, you talk about implants and that's what we, we um, kind of put the show out right now is uh, when we advertise it was on the implant angle. What can you tell me a little bit more about, well, let's start off with your awakening and we'll kind of touch base on what brought you to this point And then we're going to get right into implants. So what, what day did you wake up and or how did this happen? Exactly. How did this happen? Um, okay, first of all, I should say I was awake as a child, um, and many, you know, many older people are um, were awake. But those were times when nobody believed what was happening. So I did see things in my bedroom. I had paranormal experiences. I even told my parents about some of them, and they thought it was my imagination. So um, I would, you know, I was also obsessed with things like ghosts, Sasquatch. Um, I love Stephen King novels. I, you know, at four years old, I was addicted to Twilight Zone uh, TV shows. So I was really in that realm as a child. Um, but you know, like a lot of kids, when you go to school, they kind of shut down your gifts. And so then I lived a pretty normal life, I would say, for most of my adult life. I went to college, got married. As you read, I worked as a recruiter, placing senior level executives. Um, that all changed starting in 2010 when I had a, dr a drastic or an, a really bizarre spiritual awakening from my point of view. Um, I connected with some people. Uh, there was a gal down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, who I befriended, who said that she would go about four hours outside of Sao Paulo and the light ships would come in and beings would get off the ships. And I was so interested in this, being that I had been interested in these types of things since I was a child, I Skyped with her and another friend. And what would start to happen is these beings would come over the Skype line is the only way I could explain it. Um, they would make these sounds and I would go into sort of a light trance. Well, the third time this happened, um, they literally kind of knocked me out worked on me. And when I awoke, I had all my gifts open. I could heal with my hands. Um, my clairvoyance was starting to open. I was clairaudient, all my gifts open. And I didn't know what had happened to me. Now I never saw these beings. It turns out psychics have told me they were ninth dimensional beings. Um, so they're not taking on a physical form here in the 3d, uh, but they're around me all the time. And in fact, 
Um, I had a conversation last night and recorded them last night over the scope, Skype line with um, an eight-year-old child who was able to translate what they were saying. So, yes, these things really do exist, and it changed my life. So then they sort of guided me to start investigating all things metaphysical, ascension, UFO related. I didn't know anything about any of this other than my experiences as a child, but I never went to church. I never read the Bible. I thought spirituality meant born again Christian. I didn't know what the meaning of any of this was. So I was compelled to get on the internet and just start studying up to 12 hours a day in my pajamas with a cup of coffee, like, you know, down the rabbit hole. And the next thing you knew, um, I found that I was really great at instead of coaching and more 3D matters, people were starting to come to me for metaphysical issues. You know, I've been abducted. I hear you, you've you had some abduction experiences, Lynn, can you help me? Or I've had a love bite relationship. I hear you've had one of those, can you help me? And so it just sort of evolved from there. And uh, the, so the way I got into the um, alien implant removal happened last year. I had a client come to me. She had demons in her head telling her to kill herself. And I didn't know how to help her. And I had um, really prayed for some help to help her and other people like her because I wanted to learn how to do this. And I ended up um, affiliating with a gentleman that was pulling out implants of people. And as I worked more and more with him, I actually started having people come to me directly saying, Lynn, can you help me? And this started back last November. I had a woman call me at 4.30 in the morning. Both she and her dog were being attacked. And she said, can you, can you please help me? I don't know what to do. And so I just, again, prayed to source, prayed to my guides and said, please tell me what I need to do to help this lady get unimplanted. And boom, a big packet of information downloaded into my head. And an hour later, she had pulled out her own implants and she had unimplanted her dog. And that was my first client. And since then, I've now, uh, as of this morning, I've done 52 clients, and um, they all pretty much express the same thing. They feel completely different. They didn't know their bodies could feel this way once they get these things out because we, we are born with implants. You know, we, we accumulate them along the way. So we don't know what we're supposed to feel like until they completely come out, and then we get to see our body or feel our bodies rather for the first time. Oh, nice. Um I, I the, the the question that begs to be screamed for me right now because I'm such a visual person. What does an implant look like? Well, first of all, the implants come in lots of different forms. So let me just say that I'm using that word generically. Uh, an implant can be a sentient being, a life form, a living being of some kind, um, and it can be a non-sentient being. Um, Typically, what you'll see, if you look at the broad categories, it's pretty much all of what people would consider the dark forces on, these planet, on this planet. So it could be things like demons, types of different demons. I mean, people have literally seen, I had my client this morning saw like the little red guy with the horns and the tail. Yeah, that type of demon inside his body. Um, you can have all sorts of different spirits or disincarnate spirits. People have crossed over and are haunting people. You can have um, reptilians and other types of um, sentient life forms. So like mantid beings or reptilians, you know, they tend to be around this person. They're not necessarily inside the body. Um, and so, you know, that is something that we also clear away, not just everything that's in the body, but any of these beings that may be operating these implants from outside the body. Um, you can also have things like cords, um, ropes, strings that are tethering them, again, to these sentient life forms. You can have psychic cords, which are tethering them from the mind. Um, so there's a whole variety of what you can have in the body. And, and, but the most important thing to know is that they completely start, they take over the body and they manipulate the person. So they start to manipulate their mind and their thoughts so if people have had looping thoughts in the head, for example, I can't get this thought out of my head. Every time I have a spare moment, I can't stop thinking about this situation, even though I'm ready to be over it. That likely is an implant that may be corded to an entity. So that entity is then feeding off the louche, as David Wilcock calls it, um, the energy, the life force 
of, of the sadness or the lower feelings of that implant. And most of the implants are causing the lower feelings. So if we look on the vibrational scale um, of emotions, each emotion on the scale has a hertz level tied to it. So for example, shame would be at 20, whereas enlightenment would be at 700 to 1,000. So as you move up the scale, you're going up into a higher and higher frequency. These entities really love to focus on the frequencies of about 150 and below. 150 is anger, and below that might be fear, grief, apathy, and guilt, those types of emotions. So what these implants will do is they will keep you locked in those emotions, and so you have a hard time getting free of them bringing those emotions up to naturally heal them and let them go because they're kind of stuck in the implant in your body. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. It's uh, not as, as cut and dry as, you know, you get beamed up to a spaceship and somebody sticks a needle in with a little black thing that goes into your thigh. So it's, you know, it makes it, it and that's, I think, the common implant um, idea. Well, yes, because, see, there used to be physical implants. I mean, we're not seeing as much of that now. It's more on the etheric. Um, so, yes, you can still, I guess, get beamed up into a, sh a ship. Although, again, these days they can come right into your, your bedroom. They don't have to sort of, like, propel you through the walls like they did in the old days. Um, I, I really feel like everything is evolving. As we're evolving, everything is evolving. So there's new ways that these beings, um, and I'll call them sort of the... The, the negative ETs, the ones that are service to self, the ones that are not asking your permission to come into your body or implant you, you know, they're, they're also using different techniques of how they're coming to us these days. Um, with these etheric implants, um, they're coming from a variety of places. I mean, you could have so many different types of beings that want to tap into the human body, just like you have thousands of ETs watching what's happening happening to the human experience here on, on Earth. They all have a vested interest in the game. But the service to self ones that, that sort of tag the humans and start to feed on them, I, I kind of visualize these as parasites like mosquitoes or ticks. Um, they're basically siphoning off our life force in order for them to live. They need us to live. And so what they want to do is they want to come in and implant us because we don't understand how powerful we are. We really are these living batteries of energy. And so we're not only feeding ourselves every day, we're feeding all the implants that are in and around us or all the entities that are in and around us. So once we get free of these, you know, my clients say, oh my gosh, I feel so light. The pain in my body is gone. You know, how is this possible? Well, when you get those things out, you're feeling more the baseline of how you should feel as a human being. And most of us have never felt that until we get our implants out. So we, uh, uh, what would you guesstimate as uh, how many of us have implants out of a thousand? Everyone. If Everyone. You if you haven't gotten them out, you all have them. Yes. Now, here's... Here's where it can differ as to what degree they affect you. Like, I personally believe that implants may be the genesis of various types of diseases as well as mental illness. So, the, and the reason I believe this is because when my clients have taken them out, I've had a number of clients, you know, with sciatica, um, lower back pain, um, aches and pains around the body. When they take these things out, those pains instantly disappear. So my guess is that if an implant is in there for a lengthy period of time, what's happening is that pain is now coming, becoming um, more, uh, how do I want to say this, um, densified in the 3D. So it starts out as an etheric that may be somewhere in your etheric body, and it's sort of, you can feel it in your physical body, but then over time as it sits there, it might turn into a cancerous cell, and then numerous cancer cancerous cells and then over time the body takes over and now the body's just doing the program that was already implanted into it so yeah. in some yeah. cases it will actually take out the disease or even the feeling of mental illness OCD for example um, 
but but in other cases it won't because the disease or what have you has been there too long, and there's some follow-up care that needs to be take place in order to help that person. Now, when you were um, you had a little bit of an idea of the history of these things and how far they go back. Uh, what do you think, or when when did we first, as as humans, start uh, understanding that there was something afoot when we? When we did have an encounter, something had changed. There was a, you know, a small scar on our, on our left leg or something. When, when did that start becoming more public knowledge? Um, well, there's a couple of questions in there. If we go back to history, um, some people have said this goes back to Atlantean times, and that in fact that may have been part of the issue with uh, Lemuria and Atlantean and Atlantis sinking. Is that this this sort of um, invasion, if you will, of these archonic um, or Anunnaki or reptilian beings came in to start to enslave humanity. Now, I've done a lot of reading on the history, and I've found a lot of conflicting information in terms of when this happened, how it happened, how the um, Anunnaki work with the archons, work with the reptilians, and so on. So, I don't like to quote the history as fact because I don't know if anybody really knows the true answer. I know a lot of people talk about it, but again, you listen to five different people that give you five different versions of what's really happening here. Um, but what I would say is the Gnostics, for example, wrote about this about 2,100 years ago, um, and they called it a virus, a plague that had come down to earth and was trying to enslave humanity. So it goes back, at least in their writings, 2,100 years. And I think they've always been here. But I think that in ancient times, um, people had a more knowledge of how to deal with them. For example, if you look at the indigenous peoples around the world, the ones that still hold the sacred ancient knowledge, they know how to deal with these entities. What happened is when the so-called Illuminati uh, the cabal, whatever you want to call it, started taking over really, um, you know, uh, the taking over the planet. These entities came and started working with those bloodline families, and they in turn started locking down on humanity. But they, but humanity doesn't know it. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a drink of water. I'll just talk amongst myself until you get back. Bum, bum, ba, da, da. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm just kidding. Oh. Yep. Jim, what's that? One of those weird tickles. Yeah. <laughs> and this is also what they do. I tried to um, unimplant myself before the interview because they'll interfere. <clears throat> Damn it, Jim, what's that? So hopefully, I'll get my voice back in a minute. Okay. But, that's, but that's also very common. I mean, I run into, because I, I do work around the world with people, and a lot of times they'll come into the Skype, um, Skype line or they'll come over the phone or somebody will lose their voice or their phone doesn't work. It's really interesting how they try all these different tricks so that um, I really can't teach them how to get these implants out. So that's another thing. They don't also want us talking about it, so they'll sort of act up. Oh, Dave had a uh, had a show once. He was interviewing a gentleman who had uh, who came out that basically he had been on Mars and the uh, and uh, with the U.S. Marines for X amount of years up there. And I think that show lasted about five or six, maybe maybe ten or fifteen minutes out of two hours before everything went for a, a uh, crash. Let's say. Well, you know, and, and I've actually heard the reptilians over the Skype line. They've showed up when I've been in conversations with certain people. And, um, you know, they work very well through technology. That's another reason we have so much technology. It makes it very, very easy for these entities to come in and work through the technology um, to not only um, infiltrate us. For example, if you're on a video with someone else, you're on a live feed, it's a lot easier for the, if a person is implanted for that those entities or implants to jump over into you. That's okay. why I, yes, that's why I tend to be off camera. Um, also, if you have an up-to-date picture, it's easier. My picture is a few years old. I'm on a different timeline. And um, it, it just makes it a little more difficult for them to get into you. And given that I'm on the front lines of this work, 
you know, most of the clients, well, I, almost every one of my clients is, is pretty heavily infested by the time they get to me. It's a way that I can maintain a certain level of, of safety around myself. But yes, that's one of the reasons they use so much technology. Oh, you're talking about the reptilians. Are those the primary negative ones that are out there? Uh, well, you know, yes and no. Um, I mean, there's mantid beings, there's the greys, which work very closely with the reptilians. When you look at the ones that are kind of boots on the ground here in terms of the general implants that we see, there tend to only be a, a few different species that we see that are infiltrating people. And reptilians and, and reptilians are the worst in terms of what I'm seeing with my clients because they love to really hook in and they love to feed off the, the energy of the human. Now, the greys work with them, but the greys are doing more, from my understanding, the abduction work. And I have occasionally seen clients where they maybe have a big reptilian standing behind them with a couple of greys next door. So they do work in tandem together. But they've, they've also seen things like mantid beings above their head. So different species can come in. It's really what are the species that need our energy and life force in order to live? Those are the ones that are going to parasite the humans at this point in time. Yeah, and that's, I, I got that off a, a gentleman who had interviewed uh, two people who were abducted out in the Mojave Desert, and they, the pain that was inflicted on them by the greys was um, their expression of that was what they felt was that the greys were actually living on the energy and being um, like, I don't want to say propped up, but uh, it, they were being re rejuvenated by the negative and the pain that w they were imposing on the two abductees. Well, the re reptilians are really, you know, famous for that. They love the pain. They love <laughs> the dark emotions. I, I've always seen the greys as being more these like android type creatures that from my understanding is, you know, some people have said that they are us in the future and that, you know, they've, they basically are a dying species because they've gotten to the point where they can't even replicate in the way we do. They're just cloning each other. And over time, they're sort of losing themselves. It's like if you made a copy in a copy machine, then you made another copy and you made another copy. So they've kind of come back to try to manipulate things so that their species doesn't die. But the reptilians are different. I mean, the reptilians are just... Well, they just love darkness. They love perverted sex. They love darkness. They love dark energy. They love our dark emotions. That's what really fuels them. And so they're really the ones that I see feeding on the clients a lot more than, say, the greys. The greys will just sort of be standing around them, but it's really the reps that are feeding. It, um, we're getting a few questions from the chat room. Um, in fact, a lot of questions. It's from Marlena, who I'm sure got here late. <laughs> no, but uh, your information is basically coming not only from your awakening. Um, uh, actually, I'll go back to one of our first questions. How were the contacts initially made for uh, for implants other than, like, how do they determine who's going to get one? Now, at the beginning, you said everybody's got one. All right, so let me talk about that. So so in order to, okay, because we this is a planet, this is a prison planet, right? People know that. Alex Jones talks about that, whether you like Alex Jones or not, but that's what he calls his, his whole show is the prison, you know, prison planet, because we're in lockdown here. So this was supposed to be a, a sort of Garden of Eden type situation. And so when the serpent came and duped Eve, that's really a perfect metaphor for how all of humanity has gotten duped by this reptilian type, snake type species, right? So we are born into these bodies now in a prison environment, in this matrix environment. And so you have implants just coming into the human body. Now, once you're already here, you accumulate more along the way. Now, how do you accumulate implants? You don't have to be abducted. You could be interacting with a very toxic person who's implanted. Their implants can ju could jump into your body. You could be using alcohol or drugs to such a degree that you're popping out of your body. You know, if you get so drunk that you don't remember the night before, you are out of your body. When you're not in your body, you basically are hanging a giant I'm not home sign, and that leaves you open for all sorts of implantation and entities to take over, including full possession. And we're going to 
We'll talk a little bit more of that right after this break. You're scaring me now, Lynn. You're scaring me. And I would like No fear. No fear. Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. 3 hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics for UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at spacedoutradio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there. This is your medium, Joanna, from Spaced Out Weekend, Two Mediums and a Large. I would love it if you would come and join us with host James Tyson every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. Together, we will take your calls and your questions live. Our goal is to provide you with a positive outlook on deep questions that you may have. Questions regarding love, relationships, money, or whatever else is on your mind. Come and check us out at spacedoutradio.com. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night, live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. Big and tall, short and small, you're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena, right here on Space Out Radio. yourself constantly looking up in the sky looking for answers have you had extraterrestrial contact are you an abductee looking for answers to your experiences hi there i'm r keith andrews spaced out radio's resident et expert join me live the first friday of every month where i take questions from the spaced out radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world it's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to hope to see you there Fairies? Bigfoot? Dogmen? Trolls? Goblins? Hey, if it's cryptid in any way, I'm looking into it. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, also known as Space Star Radio's Crypto Guru. Join me every second Wednesday of the month on Space Star Radio with Dave Scott, where we will talk about the stories people call tall tales. I will fill you in on the latest sightings and the hidden histories that are causing quite a stir. You can find everything at spacedoutradio.com. Is the 24-hour world starting to wear you down? Let me, from Rivulet Reiki and Ratings, lend you a hand. Hi, this is Jolene, and if you're in need of Reiki or a realm rating, come to my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivulet r and let us help you out. At Rivulet, I specialize in healing your body, mind, and soul, no matter where you are. And be sure to check out the Rivulet R&R Facebook page for your best deals. Remember, it's time for you to make some time for you. Have you ever wondered about those weird and strange creatures people have reported throughout history? You wonder if those stories are real? Me too, and that's why I started Cryptopia.us. Hey, this is Rob Morphy, crypto historian. Join me once a month on Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott, where we will get into the odd and bizarre reports. From the Dover Demon to Harry Hominids and everything in between. I will break down what people like you and me are seeing at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Weekend with James Tyson can be found at SpacedOutRadio.com. Head to our website where you can join the space travelers and sign up for your new membership. You can also follow James on Twitter at James Tyson SOR. Now, back to our paranormal guru, James Tyson. Hey, that's me. And that was Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. Now, uh, this is my first night on Spreaker, our new platform. And I apologize for everybody last night. Dave's um, roundtable was foobarred because of me. Dave's computer uh, crashed, and I couldn't get this thing up uh, and running. We were out of firewood, and uh, we just couldn't get this thing smoked up here. Um, No, I'm not talking about that. Do you know? I'd like to also give a shout out to those of Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum and uh, to those people in the chat room that are here making sure that my uh, enunciation is correct and not commenting on my spelling. Bless you. And like the uh, man said, we have a uh, group called the Space Travelers. If you come and sign up on our website, it's 
spacedoutradio.com. It's time for the Space Travelers. I have a bunch of swag piling up here. I have books from authors that we have had on the show, and we are getting many, many more. A lot of stuff coming in. I've got to keep running down to the post office to pick up, pick up boxes here. Uh, so if you join the Space Travelers, you uh, can uh, qualify to get uh, some really cool books and some T-shirts and other stuff uh, that we have piling up, like I say. And eventually I'm going to have to move out and find a larger place. My walk-in closet is now walking away with all my cool stuff from Spaced Out Radio. We're back with Lynn Williams. Please uh, follow her on, on Facebook. Get a hold of her if you are concerned. If you've got a, uh, a, a I'll call it an implant, or there's something in there driving you a little bit crazy, or you've had a, a brush with uh, what you perceive as an ET, and you're a little bit concerned. And before the break, we were uh, talking about how or why uh, these things actually come into you. And it, it's and I know um, we had some questions about two kinds of implants, a uh, little receiver gadget under the skin and actual living entities. Now, we touched on that a bit earlier, Lynn, but just to touch on it one more time for those who've tuned in a little bit later there is uh there is a a bit of the old history of okay it's an implant it's been injected and you know you can dig it out and once you've dug it out they can't find you but you're saying that there's other means of or uh, other terms i guess the, even the term implant obviously is a poor way of uh saying it it's it's more of a possession well, well, let me be clear about that. No, I would, I would categorize possession a little different. A possession would be if one of these entities, say a reptilian. All right, so let's let's just get back a little bit to the ways that these things can get in, and I think that'll help answer your question. So we talked about the um, the alcohol and the drugs, and when you've left your body. Um, so say that you got really drunk, you blacked out. And you were prime target for a variety of reasons, which we can also talk about for an entity. Um, that entity will try to come in and operate you as much as possible. Because the more they can lock you down and operate you, the more they can feed on you. They can manipulate how you feel. You may feel really depressed. You may feel really sad. They can manipulate those emotions. Um, now, this isn't going to be a one-time thing. Oh, I got drunk one time and boom, I got taken over. But if a person is doing this uh, regularly, they're going out of body regularly with drugs, alcohol, that sort of thing, then over time this being takes over more and more of you until the point where you can have a full possession. So a full possession would be, say, a reptilian being is now fully operating you. You're not even home. Um, that would be a little bit different than what we call an implant. Now, there are physical implants, which... You know, people have dug out, and I've actually seen those. Um, and but the ones I'm talking about tonight on this show, and this is the these are the ones most of us have. These are called etheric implants. So again, even though you can't see them in the body, you'd never find them on an X-ray. A doctor won't find them. They're still affecting your body as if they were here, because just like an interdimensional being that could come in, a reptilian, for example, is interdimensional. It can come in and, and affect you, these implants are affecting you interdimensionally as well. And they're affecting your auric body as well. So your mental, emotional, spiritual body down to the physical body. And I, and I know it's a hard concept to sort of grasp. The only thing I can tell you is when somebody goes through a removal and then they get to feel what their body feels like, like the gentleman I had this morning, he said, Lynn, this is amazing. How is this possible that I could feel this way? just taking out something that's supposed to be imaginary because they aren't imaginary. They're as real as any of the interdimensional beings that we're talking about. So, so that's kind of the difference between possession and, and an implant. And then when I use the word implant again, I also include a reptilian standing behind you, plugged into you, operating that implant to feed off of the collection of the negativity that, Im that implant has caused. Okay, that that is um, again. It comes under the heading of a little bit frightening. 
Well, and, 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 you know, I'm not, I don't want to ever spread fear because I'm here on the planet. I know why I'm here in this lifetime and it's to spread empowerment. So this is really just knowledge and education. We weren't taught this in school. I mean, the cabal knows about all of this. They deal with this stuff regularly, but, but the average human out there doesn't know anything about this. And so if you don't know anything about it, you have no way of protecting yourself. You have no way of getting over your fear and realizing this is the world we've always lived in. These things didn't just join us recently. They've been here our whole life and affecting us our whole life. We just didn't know it. Okay. And so they, you know, they can even orchestrate bad things, ha- you know, negative things happening to you in your day. All of a sudden your boss blows up at you for no reason and fires you. And you're sitting there saying, what just happened? Well, probably his implant got turned on. Um, or, you know, you're in a love relationship where things are going really, really well. And then all of a sudden your lover, you know, goes out and has an affair. Chances are your lover was, you know, implanted. And that was a ploy called a love bite potentially to get you off path and down into dark emotions. The ones that are targeted the most for this type of implantation in a way that it really affects their life are going to be the light workers the people that are here on a mission to serve humanity and make a difference in the world. People on radio shows like yourself, James, people like me that are out there doing this type of work, we're the ones that are going to be most targeted because we're the ones that these entities are most afraid of because we're going to be the ones that take this planet back. Yeah, that's um, and that's one of the things that I always have concerns with. Uh, well, Dave and I, have, we've always talked about the reason that we actually have this show is to to get the word out and uh, we never think about the negative sides of that it's it is a bit of an issue uh for us and you know we we think uh in in some cases we i have shamans that come on who do basically what you do but they're basically they describe it as moving a uh, removing a negative entity or negative spirit from the person or the person's life uh but they don't identify the the spirit as being an extraterrestrial right and 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 i don't know you know if i'd have to sit down with some of the shaman or like in the catholic church and exorcist um is it actually a spirit per se or could it be a demon inside the body that you can actually see. See, one of the things that happens when I take my clients through this process is I don't know how it happens. I mean, I do know I activate people with with codes. I know I do that in my coaching, but they end up being able to see these things. And so as we take them through the process, they can actually see all of it in their own body and they're pulling it out of their own body. And what's so great about that technique is number one, well, a couple of things actually, like a, a few of my clients have pulled out implants where they say, oh, that's the cause of my negative thinking all the time. And it, it's, it started to register that these implants were actually causing the looping of, say, negative thoughts or some sort of a program that was being embedded into that person. This is why I'm always in depression. And as soon as you get the implant out, they no longer have to take their depression drugs because it's gone. So when we talk about the spirit side of it, I don't know how much of that is spirit, like, or, or is it an entity or implant of some kind that if you took that out, that would be gone. I don't really know. I if, really don't know. If you've got a, a implant that is a, an ET energy, an ET, let's say, and you remove that, what happens to the ET? Hmm. We actually, um, we actually send it back to source. So it gets captured. Everything that my clients find in their body, we capture. And then it gets sent back to source and reconstituted. Okay. What does that mean? Well, we're all energy. Everything is energy, right? Yep. So when you die, right, you're going, your body is going to disintegrate. And, you know, if you were if you were buried into the earth, you're melted down, down into the earth. Meanwhile, your soul, your spirit is popped out of the body and has gone on to another incarnation. Right. 
So everything is energy that can be reconstituted into something else. When you leave this physical body as James, you're going to reconstitute into something else because you never die. None of us die. So the same with the reptilians or any other being. You know, they've just chosen a different form. And who knows, maybe you've been a reptilian in a past life. Maybe I have. And we've, you know, we've, we've come into all these different forms because when you, you know, source wants to experience itself, and so it's fragmented out, all of these fragments, we're one of those fragments as a soul in this body or as a spirit. And so we're, we're basically reconstituting all the time when we, quote unquote, die, really all we're doing is we're reconstituting into something else. Oh, I see. Because yeah, okay. I, I, I had my... Um, when I had my first reading from a spirit medium, she identified my primary spirit guide as not being ever, never being earthbound. And then uh, one of the friends of uh, Spaced Out Radio, Derek White Skycloud, who is very, very psychic, he's, um, he's an experiencer, um, has been abducted. He looked at a photograph of my aura and he said, oh, your spirit guides, those guys standing behind you, they're ETs. And then he walked away and I thought, what? And then it came, it dawned on me that, oh yeah, she said they weren't ever, or this, my primary was never earthbound, but she'd never even thought of it being extraterrestrial, but they're really tall and blue. So there's three of them. And of course there are positive ETs and there are negative ETs, right? And when I mean positive and negative, what I mean is service to self and service to other. So, you know, some people would say the Arcturians, for example, are service to other positive ETs. They're here to help humanity, not harm it, not to feed on us. Um, even though really every ET that's interested in humans and interested in Earth at this time has some agenda for being here. But it's just their agenda isn't one to harm us necessarily, right? Um, whereas the reptilians, and not all reptilians are negative either. I mean, people have talked about there being positive species of reptilians. There's not just one species of reptilian. So, when I talk about these entities in the in the context of this evening, I'm talking about the ones that are service to self, beings that need to parasite off of us in order to survive. Okay? Yeah. So, um, let's see, where were we going with this? <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it was uh, basically I was wondering if, uh, like, you mine were these tall blue ones and you said there were some good ones and... Oh, that was why I was going to ask yeah. you. So, so did this um, psychic determine that this blue being behind you was service to self? In other words, out to harm you in some way and it duped you or that it actually was there to help you and be a, a guide to you? Oh, they were the guides. They were, it, there was no, he didn't see anything negative in them at all. He just said, your guides are ETs. Yes. Yeah. If there see, was I, something negative, he would have pulled me aside and said, look, we have to work on this. Yeah, exactly. Although some of the negative ETs can cloak themselves and become something different. A lot of times my clients will, you know, we'll do some work and then they'll say, oh, there's my spirit guide standing. I see this beautiful Indian woman. And so I have sort of a technique for dis for helping that person ferret out. Is that really what you think it is? And after we, we do my little technique, then all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute, that was a demon cloaked like my spirit guide. So they do try to fool us a little bit. I mean, the same with channeling. We have to be careful with channelers because they might not know who they're actually channeling. Somebody could come in proclaiming to be Jesus, but is it really Jesus? Because the reptilians can pre pre pretend to be Jesus. Yeah. So, you know, you just have to, it, I, I always say to people, the biggest muscle we have to discern right now, and it takes deep study and experiencing and knowledge, and that is discernment. We have to discern what's truth and what's fiction. And the only way we're going to do that is continue to study and experience these things. And over time, okay, that one's true. This one isn't. That doesn't sound right to me. This does. It'll just come to us because that's part of who we're meant to be as humans, to be able to discern that. Yeah. I, I, that, that's, that leads to a whole whack of other phil philosophical or spiritual kind of um questions uh and i we could and just so the listener knows lynn's going to be coming back she has experienced so much and has 
gathered a, a huge whack of information and she's up she's at this point she's trying to get her uh or, or we're at the baby beginning of your uh, website, but the uh, she has a lot of information, uh, not only on extraterrestrials, but um, different uh, government contacts. She has been contacted by the Men in Black. Uh, she has there's a number of things that Lynn has run into uh, in her life, and she will be coming back and we'll be talking about these different types of encounters she's had and what she believes is going on here um lynn the the uh the implant side of this uh is is interesting and well i should you know when i say interesting i i mean interesting and my eyebrows are raised the uh, it, it it is it is something that, that i've never really looked into at all and in my understanding um you know obviously it's been kind of uh pointed out by you that it's not just what we think about an implant again the the beaming up and sticking a, a needle under your under your skin this is this is something a lot different um in your case if once you got the implant out can you uh are you can you stay clean or are you always cleaning yourself well, that's why I wanted to teach this versus have somebody go to someone because there's there are people out there that will take your, you know, will say, I'll, I'll take your implants out. But the problem with that is, yes, we live in a parasite infested world. So so you can get the implants out or the entities around you on a given day and you may feel really clear, um, but there's more waiting to get in. Now, it, you know, I want to go back to how these things come in that might help the listeners um, you know, so we talked about drugs and alcohol. We talked about, um, you know, being around toxic people. Um, you know, you've, you've got a really toxic person who's always starting fights with you. That's going to lower your vibration. That's going to make it easier for implants to come into you because again, they always nail you when you're in a lower vibrational state or when you're out of the body. So they also can come in at night. For example, when you pop out of the body, as we all do, and go off into whatever realms we're going into, your body is left home. So I always suggest that people use protection, number one. Protection really works. Um, I make it very simple. There's lots of protect protection techniques out there. You know, I, I would allow each person to decide what works best for them. But what I do and what I suggest my clients do, and it really, really works, is put a golden egg around yourself. Um, so, for example, let's say it's time for you to go to bed. You know you're going to go out of body at night. So put a golden egg around you, gold on the outside, golden light on the inside around your body. I would put a second one around your bedroom, and I'd put a third one around your entire home. And there's something magical about the number three. It's very, very protecting. And I actually had a client who I was dealing with in Australia who was from a bloodline family, highly targeted, so even after she was going to get all these out, there were going to be many more that would want to come in and try to, you know, tamper with her. And in the middle of the session, she literally could see them knocking on that third egg trying to get in. She could see it with her clairvoyance. And so, yes, they're always, um, always around us. And so we have to take precautions to kind of protect ourselves. But here's the good news. Once you know this technique and you can pull them out of yourself, Number one, you're not going to be pulling lots and lots of it out every day. You know, when I work with my clients, usually that's their first implant removal. It takes up to two hours. We pull it all out. And now if you start doing it every day, practicing it, you may find one or two things came in. Okay, boom, you get them out and you're back to being, you know, feeling good again. Um, and then if you do healthy measures um, in terms of your lifestyle, the people you hang out with, getting plenty of sleep. That's so important for our bodies. Um, you know, sleep is so underrated. Sleep is what helps us regenerate ourselves every single day and give us the strength to fight these things off. Um, you know, managing your emotions, if you have a spiritual practice or meditation, so that if you are having a depressed type of day, you're angry over something, you're able to really sit with it, process it, and let it go. That's the way we humans are made. We're not made to hold on to these emotions and bury them. And so, but the implants in the body will have you do that. They'll be almost like a 
catch basin for all of that negativity and it'll want to hold it there because then the entities can feed on it. But the way we're made as humans is we should be able to get this stuff running through our bodies with healthy practice up and out. Let it go, move on. Um, also, this is uh, really important as well, um, interactions um, in, a, in intimacy and in sex. That's another way you can be heavily implanted because when you think about it, when two people are being intimate, they're actually inviting each other into their bodies, literally as well as energetically, right? So if you're making love to someone who's implanted and you're not using any kind of you know, protection like I talked about earlier, that's another way these things can come in. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah, I always suggest to couples, if, you're, if your partner is open to it, both get unimplanted. Um, that's the best way. But if your partner thinks this is all woo-woo crazy, then at least get unimplanted yourself and then start using protection. And then you may just have to clean yourself out the next day. Um, you know, another thing that might help the audience, James, I just thought of is how these, how people might know that they have implants because your earlier questions about where do these come from and how, you know, do people have to get abducted to get them? And I just said, well, we're born with them. But let me tell you some ways that people will know that they have them. If you get all of a sudden these weird aches and pains that come from nowhere, you know, a stabbing pain in the middle of the night mm -hmm. or a sudden migraine out of nowhere, chances are that's an implant that's acting up inside of you. Obsessive compulsive thoughts that you can't get out of your head, uh, thoughts or voices that are telling you to harm yourself or someone else, um, addictions that seem impossible to break. I think this is probably one of the, um, uh, the reasons that when people go to rehab, even though their will is trying to break the addiction, as soon as they get out of rehab, you know, they get implanted again and that implantation will want them to drink or drug or overeat or whatever the addiction is. Because again, it causes trauma, causes pain for the person. And then the pain becomes something these entities feed on. Um, certainly if uh, any love bite relationships, if people are familiar with that term, Eve Lorgan has written a lot about that. Um, that's again where they set you up as a light worker with someone who is probably more implanted than you are, is not as strong to fight these off. And so here you're in this deep love relationship and all of a sudden that person pulls the rug out from under you. They go have sex with someone else or they break up with you for no reason and it causes you, of course, severe trauma. You're in bed crying for three days and that's when the entities come in for a nice feed. So um, these are some of the ways that you'll know that you've got these implants. Do you have, um, you know, some sort of pain in the body? The doctors have never been able to find anything wrong with you. They've x-rayed you. They've done MRIs. They're telling you it's all in your head. No, it isn't in your head. It's probably an implant. Okay. So what's so great is when you take these things out, these pe people are like, oh, my gosh, all of that stuff goes away. The pain goes away. The looping thoughts go away. I'm able to make better decisions about the people that are in my life. If somebody's toxic, I'm able to say, no, I'm going to get that person out of my life and hold the boundary, whereas maybe before they weren't able to do so. Okay. So you – oh, actually, we're coming up to the uh, break. I've got uh, – of course, I've, I'm taking a lot of notes here, and I'm. it's driving me crazy because I want to – <laughs> you want to just keep going, asking way too many questions that we're going to have to save for another show. But I'm going to uh, have to break for our second break of the night. And this is a good one. And I do, oh, before I go to this break, I just want to tell everybody tomorrow on Two Mediums and a Large uh, with Joanna and Paisley. Joanna can't make it tomorrow night. She has a uh, dinner with friends on for Easter Sunday. So she's not going to be there. We're going to try to get someone else if not you've got paisley and you have me that's tomorrow night two mediums and a large 9 p.m on the pacific coast well that's around midnight with you people on the east we'll be right back with more from lynn williams right after this have you ever seen a ufo a ghost bigfoot or something else weird or arcane this is dave scott host of spaced out radio Every night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern Time, we are live for three hours of jam-packed information with the top guests from their field of expertise. 
Come take a listen and share your experiences with us. You can find everything you need at spacedoutradio.com. Are you experienced? The last Monday of the month on Spaced Out Radio is a night of psychic vision, mediumship, UFO and ET contact, Bigfoot stories, animal communication, and so much more with me, Elizabeth Anglin. I'd love it if you would join host Dave Scott and I on the myriad of topics we delve into. Every month, we share new views that may help you understand your own experiences. So tune on in at spacedoutradio.com and stamp your cosmic passport. Are you an ET experiencer, but you just don't know what's going on? Are you too timid or shy to discuss it with anyone? Maybe I can help. Join me, R. Keith Andrews, the first Friday of every month on Spaced Out Radio, and I will help you to find the answers you're looking for. Together, I will help you understand the off-worlders and the true meanings behind your experiences. All you have to do is join us in the Spaced Out Radio chat. See you there. Hi there. This is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes... We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Space Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Every month on Spaced Out Radio, we look into the deep and dark reports of cryptids roaming around the world with me, Rob Morphy from Cryptopia.us. I would love it if you would join me and host Dave Scott as we delve into the most arcane stories and reports regarding creatures of the unknown. My job is to hunt down the details and bring the evidence forward to you. These aren't your regular Bigfoot stories I'm talking about either. You can find out more about crypto history at spacedoutradio.com. With an ever-expanding listenership base, Spaced Out Radio is the perfect place for you to advertise your product. Our listeners support those who sponsor this show. So whether you're an author or a company, Spaced Out Radio is the perfect place for you. Our pricing is more than competitive, and your advertisements will be seen and heard every show. Head to spacedoutradio.com and advertise with us today. Contact us at info at spacedoutradio.com today. Become more intimate and interactive with Spaced Out Radio. Join our Space Travelers Club with your new membership. For $5 a month, we'll provide you with special access to the website, monthly prize draws from books to psychic readings, along with monthly newsletter, private interviews, and more. Sign up today to be part of Spaced Out Radio's experience. Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you join me in Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Do you have a guest or a topic you'd like to hear on Spaced Out Weekend with James Tyson? You can email him at james at spacedoutradio.com or follow James on Twitter at James Tyson SOR. And our website is spacedoutradio.com. Now, Space Travelers Unite, here's the second half hour of Spaced Out Weekend with James Tyson. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our second half here of Spaced Out Weekend. And we tonight have Lynn Williams, who has been talking to us about what she does for her clients, which is kind of odd. She removes implants that they have acquired in their day-to-day lives. These implants are what she's telling us are from extraterrestrials. And before we went away on the break, we were we were grilling her. Actually, we, she was throwing all sorts of cool stuff at us about um, implants and, and leaving yourself too open for these things, which, you know, honestly, that kind of explains a lot of the, uh, the down and out people that we see here on the streets talking to themselves and hearing voices. And as a result of the voices, they're doing bad things. And it's just, I wonder if, Lynn, we could get those people to sit in front of you. Would you be able to help them? 
Well, what I do um, ask of my clients is, well, I try to work with clients that are in control of what I call their vehicle. So this body is your vehicle here on earth. And um, you haven't been given an instruction manual, so you didn't know you were actually driving a Ferrari. And so most people pretty much understand their car to the degree of a Volkswagen, right? But it, by getting these implants out, you really start to feel more like the Ferrari. Um, but most people um, that are, I would call, you know, emotionally or mentally pretty healthy, but they've got this interference, those are clients I work with really well. But if we're talking about a MyLab, for example, that is still being used, um, a military abductee, um, a regular abductee, uh, that is, uh, or a um, MK Ultra, for example, that's fractured, anyone who has kind of this fractured type personality where they might be off in other fragments of themselves at different times, that's a lot harder because what you can do is unimplant the sort of the main person, but then if they're splitting off into alters, they're getting reimplanted in the altar almost instantly. So I try to deal mostly with the kind of healthier uh, community, a lot of light worker community. Um, that if they can just be relieved of these things, they can get on with their mission and what it is they really came here to do. Um, in those other instances, I really feel like those people probably need um, some quantum healing and some expertise that I don't have about how to pull those fractured pieces of themselves back in before they work with me. Otherwise, it just won't stick. Okay, so it's putting somebody, like picking somebody off the street who's talking to the invisible Napoleon, um, that would be somebody that's broken to the point of you You just pull one entity out and the other, another one would is waiting in line to step in. Yeah, I mean, that might be somebody that maybe the implant was, say he's schizophrenic, maybe the implant was the genesis of that long ago, but now it's gotten to the point where it's sort of taken him over and he's disconnected from reality. So that would be really hard to work with someone because then they wouldn't understand the concept, okay, now you need to do this every day and you need to protect your, yourself, like you and I would, for example. Okay, I know there's a lady here that um, out here in, in on the west coast of Canada, she was one of these people who would hear voices and she was on medication for years and she actually went to a psychic who... Um, identified the voices as being guides and a couple of real negative ones, which she did some work with um, a healer, and the negative ones were pushed out. And this lady's off her medication now, and she's been fine for years. But this came out because there's been a number of these cafes open across Canada where people who hear voices, they all sit down and talk amongst themselves about the voices they hear and the similar things. And she still goes to these coffee get-togethers, but and she just sits back and listens, and kind of, kind of maybe helps them, kind of maybe step be, step towards some type of healing, as opposed to uh, relying on medication and being told, you know, you're you're sick and broken, therefore you need pills, as opposed to no, you just don't. Yeah, it's hard not to listen to those voices, but when you do. You know, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So why don't you get the, those voices out of your head? And this is an alternative way. So they're they're not really down and out per se, but they they are in a, a you know on a, a disability pension, let's say, because they're they are hearing these voices. Well, and 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 those are clients that I work with every day. I I have a number of clients that have been medicated, for example, by Western medicine for a lot of this stuff and. Or they've gone to a Western psychologist, a Western trained psychologist who doesn't believe in what I'm talking about tonight or, or isn't educated in it. Um, and so again, you know, wants to put them on some sort of medication. I just dealt with a lady like that last, last week. And, you know, the good news is that, yes, a lot of times there was nothing really wrong with them other than they were really tortured by these entities and once we get rid of them, then they can get off their drugs. Now, I always, of course, I'm very careful. I'm not a doctor, so I would never, you know, tell someone to take off, you know, go off your meds. Um, although I, I do advise that they do it long term if they can under doctor supervision. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but, but once they get the implants out, a lot of times they can then go back to their doctors and make a case for, you know what, I'm feeling really good. Can we start lowering no. my dosage and maybe over time get off them all together in a way that works for the doctor as well as them? Yeah. You know, that makes sense. That way you can, uh, it, it's that whole, you know, there's that gray line or, or actually is a, is a pretty high fence we have to sit on when you're dealing with um, somebody who's got a medical issue and being a non-medical person, even though you don't want to venture into that realm of Western medicine and all the legalities that come with we we run into that with my two mediums at a large who someone will phone in saying, you know, I have this pain in my side. What do I do? They could probably tell them what to do, but it's not, it, it is just something that's, that's not acceptable because all you do is either worry somebody or you're, you're afraid to get into that. So it is a bit of a, a dicey thing to start helping somebody with, uh, especially people who perceive themselves or someone else has perceived they have mental health issues. Well, I, you know, the good news is I was a psychology major in college and through my coaching experience, um, you know, I've, I've gotten some training around this. So while I'm not a psychologist, I'm, I'm at least trained enough to be able to ask some important questions of my client. And I have turned away people um, because I felt that their mental, for example, their mental health issues were um, were out there enough that it was not a good time to do the implant removal on top of that. Um, I've had a number of schizophrenics come to me, um, and you can tell somebody where, are you really schizophrenic, or is it that you heard into the other realms and then the doctor told you you were schizophrenic, or are you truly schizophrenic? And um, so I try to make that distinction. And if they're truly schizophrenic, I'm not going to work on them because they're not going to what I because when they're dealing with these entities, I don't want to do anything that would throw them over the edge. So I do try to diagnose and ask the proper questions as best I can. But here's the other thing that's really great about implant removal. It's it's not harmful. It's not it, it, you don't harm the body. You don't harm the mind. If anything, you free all of that. So there's really no side effects to this other than the fact that now you're shining very brightly and there's a good chance these entities are going to try to come back in. So you do have to use protection and proper, you know, um, lifestyle habits in order to keep yourself clear. But, but other than that, there's nothing but advantages to this. Okay. It's, it, it is interesting, and I find that um, the whole implant... I was going to call it a phenomenon, but if it goes back to the beginning of time, it's it's basically the, an, an implant lifestyle that we've all been living for thousands of years. What is the end goal for um, those who stick these implants in us? Um, well, they really want to enslave, feed on, and um, lower the vibration of humanity. We are so amazing as God Source co-creating co-creative beings and we're starting to see it with these young children now emerging on the planet you know the crystals the rainbows the dolphins the diamond children i mean these kids are coming in with full-on telepathy um, bilocation abilities healing abilities i mean just amazing and that's who we're supposed to be um that's who we were always supposed to be we were supposed to be able to incarnate here on earth and be able to co-create our experience but we've got enslaved by these entities and these beings to the point where we have lost our knowledge of who we really are and who we're supposed to be. And that's the other thing that's so wonderful in this implant removal process is I, I watch people become so empowered as they watch these entities run from them. Because the minute you turn yeah. around and you face this giant mosquito, whatever it looks like, you know, a mantid being, a reptilian, and you say, ha ha, I see you and I'm going to get rid of you. You will watch the fear rise up in their eyes and they will run from you. It's pretty funny, actually. And so it makes the client very powerful at the end of this session. They're like, oh my gosh, A, I didn't know this existed. B, I can't believe how good my body feels. See, oh my gosh, these things ran from me. They were afraid of me. Who must I be that they would run from me? And it starts to re-educate the mind into who we really are. And that, 
honestly, James is the is the happiest part of my work for me is that I'm empowering people to rise up to be who they were always meant to be. Well, that's kind of cool. The I was interviewing somebody, and gosh darn it, I can't remember who it was. A lady just a few weeks ago who kind of you know off the cuff said, "Yeah, you know, I there was a beam of light, and I I looked over at it, and this." about a four foot tall lizardy looking thing came out wearing a tool belt and i always it was remarkable that i stared at this thing because it was wearing a tool belt oh no that was uh yeah i know who it was there's a lady who's a geomancer who's basically a human emf detector she her name is uh, uh galen chauncey and she sees things and she who <laughs> always says if you saw things that i see you would never leave your house but she uh she looked. She described it as this lizard standing on two feet, uh, wearing a tool belt, and it looked at her, made eye contact, and it was just kind of like, "Oh crap, you see me?" And stepped yes. back into the light and disappeared. Yes, my client. The, uh, I last. What was it about two days ago? I, I'm losing track of time. What are we on Saturday? I yeah. guess it was a client I had on Thursday. Um, <laughs> she found okay. So what it, well, often will happen is that say you've got a, an entity outside of you. In this case, it was a reptilian standing behind her. There's always usually more behind that one and then more behind that. So as she kept going back and looking, <laughs> all of a sudden behind this single reptilian, which she got rid of, there sprang up an entire forest. And she said, that is so weird. When I look behind me now, there's a giant, beautiful forest. And I said, mm, look more closely. And I gave her my technique for uncloaking and mm -hmm. she said, oh, my God, Lynn, there's like all these reptilians and they're hiding behind the trees, hoping that I don't see them. And I said, OK, well, we're going to go get the whole forest then. And we did. Oh, and, you know, gosh. you know what else is really cool about this is when we get these things off the planet by, you know, reconstituting them back to source. I feel like we're doing this for all of humanity as well. Yes, person by person. But every time I mean, those are reptilians now that are never going to bother someone else. Yeah. You know, they're going to go into some other form and they're going to come back in a different way. They come back as like mantis or something. Way to go, Lynn. <laughs> right, there well, you go. Do we, have, do we have anybody on our side that is a little bit stronger than these yahoos that can, you know, all we have to do is kind of help them come in? Yes, but what's difficult about the ones that are on our side is they're the service to self. I'm sorry, service to others. And so, you know, they'll tell you we can only interfere up to a certain point, that humanity has to play this game out on on their own to some degree, but with, with our help. So, you know, there are many people out there that believe the reason that you guys aren't toast on the West Coast with Fukushima is because the good guys are there basically transmuting the radiation. Otherwise, you should be toast. So yeah. um, we, we, we do... We should have been toast... Uh when the Bikini Island atoll, or was it Bikini Island had the hydrogen bomb on it and Nevada had a bunch of nasty tests, above ground nuclear tests. Oh, absolutely. And look at with the chemtrails and all the nanotechnology that they're putting in our food and our water and our and in the chemtrails and in the vaccines. I mean, really, when you think about the, those of us that are awake enough to know what they're doing to us, the cabal is doing to us. And I use that as the catch-all phrase for the, you know, the dark humans as well as the dark entities working together. Um, we should be dead by now, but we aren't. Why aren't we? Well, I think, number one, we're, it's a testament to who we are as humans. We are really an incredible race of beings. And that's why so many other beings are interested in us. And secondly, we've got the positive guys here helping us every single day unseen. But they can only help to a certain degree. And and like I said, the you know they're relying on us to play this out to some degree ourselves. We've got to wake up to who we are, and we've got to take this planet back on our own. Oh, I get you. So yeah, that's that's one of the things that I was I was curious about, and I think we brought it up, uh, or I, I was in a beer conversation with somebody about um, things like uh, GMOs and thing and. You know, people complaining about, you know, the corn isn't pure old fashioned corn like a thousand years ago or whatever. And you know, well, said, well, we should all be dead then if we've been eating genetically modified stuff for a long time. And, but, uh, you know, it's it going to get worse. Yes. But, I you know, I kind of had a feeling that 
there was a lot of guidance, uh, a lot of like the world's not going to come to an end. We aren't going to, as a bunch of wobbly apes here, we're not going to destroy our own planet because there is a lot of other entities out there on our behalf getting in the way and, ex you know, helping us. It's, a, it's an ongoing battle, a constant ongoing battle. But uh, it, it's something that I don't believe we're going to have an issue with because we have we do have all these other beings kind of holding the fort until we awaken and get that slap in the head to say, no, you, you know, you have to do this too. Right. And, you know, we all chose this game that we're playing down here. Our, our souls and our spirits chose this game. So, you know, it, when we're down here in these human bodies, it's very easy to feel like we're being manipulated and it's the bad guys against the good guys. We all chose the game on a higher level. And so those good guys, the good guides for us are letting us play out the game. But, but they also, many of them are from the future and have already come back and said, you guys won. The good guys won here. You know, the, the dark beings that have been on this planet for eons are leaving. And, um, and you're going to, you, you guys, what's going on right now with the people that are incarnated right now and these kids that are incarnating, it won't take very long, I don't believe. Some people think it's going to take hundreds of years before we take this planet back. I honestly don't believe that. I believe it can happen in a blink of an eye. It can be the hundredth monkey effect where all of a sudden, even the, the sleepers that people call sheeple, they can just wake up like that, boom, you know, and change everything overnight. I really believe that. So, you know, I think these next three, four, five years are going to be amazing on this planet. But right now we're kind of in the thick of it because those dark beings know they're losing and they're giving us everything they have. And they're, you know, working through the humans that they can manipulate, the puppets, at the higher levels that theoretically, you know, control this planet. You know, the, the, the uh, bloodline families, you know, all of them, uh, our governments and so on. They think they're winning on the one hand, but I think they're very afraid at the, on the other and even because of things like the Internet, because, you know, they, they created this Internet in order to spy on us. But look at what we're doing with it. Yeah. You know, we're basically exchanging information to other humans around the globe in seconds. Again, it's going to cause a hundred monkey effect and boom, people are just, you know, I'm going to be out of business on implant removal, I'm sure, very soon. In a good way. I'm happy about it because I think at some point enough people will get unimplanted and they'll then start teaching others and then boom. Humanity will just know how to do it, and they won't know how they did. Yeah, it's. It, I think before that happens, I think we're going to have more of us that are going to be um, enlightened. There'll be enough of us around to say, you know, this is the reason it's happened. Yes, yes, but it's happening so quickly now. Things are happening so quickly. You know, I didn't even hear, and I've been studying metaphysical and spiritual and UFO things for six years now, religiously, every single day. This is my passion. I, do n I don't have a TV in my house. When I want entertainment in the evening, I get on my computer and I go learn something. I didn't really hear about implant removal until last summer. That's how new it was. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's out there doing it. Yeah. You know? but, it but again, what I'm doing is one step ahead of that and is I'm teaching it. I really believe in the teach a man to fish Otherwise, you're going to have to keep going back and paying somebody to get your implants out because you're going to get implanted again. It's inevitable. Now, some people have figured it out on their own, and that's wonderful, but that's a smaller percentage. Um, most people have to just keep coming back. So when you teach it to someone, now you can turn around and do it every day. You can do it in the middle of the night if you want, and you can turn around and teach your family. That's how we're going to free this planet. Yeah. Yeah. That's it just one. It's just one person teaching some how how to how to do it themselves, and that person going on. Yes, uh, I was. That's what I, I was up in Mount Shasta last summer, and that's a lot of the people I ran into who had businesses there were just extremely open to showing people how to do what they were doing, and it it, it just made it so nice and easy to wander around there and uh you could ask anyone a question and they, it wasn't like they were all hiding it and, you know keeping their cards to themselves like oh if i tell you you'll make money on it or something and mm -hmm. you know, it was like no this is a we're doing this yes they're making money on it because money is energy and you know everyone has to eat 
You don't eat, you don't poop, you don't poop, you die. It's a fact of life. It's uh, they, <laughs> These people had jobs doing this, but they still were very, very open to teaching someone else how to go do it and uh, send them out into the wastelands to help the others. Like right. Me. And, you know, and we all need teachers in the beginning for all of this journey because it's such a new journey. It's not the one we were taught growing up, right? So no matter what the subject matter is, um, we need a teacher of sorts to get the, you know, get us started on the right path. And then, yeah, we take over and do it ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. So where do you see us going? Um, like, where do you see us in the next five years? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a, an eternal optimist. My glass is always half full. So Actually, it's more than half full, three quarters full um, all the time. I really think things are going to really turn around in the next two years. I mean, I just think when I'm looking at how quickly people are waking up and how quickly these young, because see what's happening with these dark beings too, these entities is they're kind of getting sandwiched. They've got the, um, the light beings, the positive beings that are working in favor of humanity, right? Um, and then you've got the ones that are waking up on the ground here on Earth. And they're kind of getting sandwiched in the middle. So as these um, star children, the indigos, the crystals, the rainbows, you know, as these kids get older and older, I mean, I'm an old indigo, but, you know, going way back. But now these new kids have, have abilities that, you know, took me till I was much older to be able to open up to. They're going to start to change things instantly. They're already doing it. They're coming up with new inventions they're coming up with new healing modalities. They're opting out of the, the corporate BS. Um, they're opting out of doing the types of jobs that are, you know my generation gladly went and did. So they're going to create their own way of living. They're going to create their own way of being, and we're the ones that are going to have to follow. And so I think that's just going to change things really quickly. Oh, yeah, I think it will. It, I don't it, think we're going to have to wait either follow or get out of the way. Yeah, yeah. And you're seeing, you know, there's a real movement toward communal living, tiny homes, people are downsizing. What it's really what they're really doing, I think is getting back to the indigenous roots. When you look at the indigenous peoples around this globe, and it, had we not tampered with them, they knew how to live in harmony with the land. They knew how to take only what they needed. Um, they didn't really own anything. I mean, even an American, you know, tribe of Indians, you know, they 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 went out and skinned an animal and made their teepee and, you know, and used all of that animal for their, their meat and their clothing. And, you know, they, they, they treated this earth the way it should be treated. And now I'm seeing a lot of these young people starting to live the same way. They want to get away from all the noise, all the technology. Um, and... <laughs> so do I, actually. Hmm. Um, and so I'm starting to see some of the older people, some of the people I've been coaching. Um, I had a couple in Miami I coached. Um, they were living this big 4,000-square-foot house. They were both senior executives in big corporations. They're like, how do I get off this gerbil wheel and just go buy a little log cabin in the North Carolina woods and simplify my life? And so, you know, they were just looking for a roadmap. Where do we even start to get off of this? gerbil wheel and start to simplify everything well it is hard we where i live on a like if you look at canada we've got 30 million people all within i don't know what is it 500 miles of the 49th or like the 49th parallel of the border it's because that's where the better weather is and um eventually with global warming yeah there's there's a lot of land to move to but i'm in a place right now that my little chunk of land was sold last summer to a developer, uh, as you were last fall, for 1.1 million, and we can't buy a house in our neighborhood. Yeah, because well, you know they're going for 1.4 million to people from Shanghai, buying them and to leave them empty as an investment. As a Chinese, um, you know, economy tanks, they're throwing money into land here, so the people who live here can't even buy homes. There isn't a lot of land. Because there is, we have agricultural land reserves, so you can't build on it. But, you know, they're talking about, instead of going out and living in the bush, they're talking about building up as opposed to building out. Right. You know, densification. 
Right. And, you know, that whole Chinese buying up our country thing, you know, that's all part of the um, Agenda 21, the cabal, um, you know, system of enslaving us. But but people are opting out of that because they're getting to a point where the ones that are awake anyway are getting to a point where if they're far enough along in their spiritual journey, even if they had to go live in a tiny house somewhere, they'd be fine. They're not attached to the stuff anymore. Um, so they're, so that's one way they're not going to have power over us is if we're not attached to the outcome, they don't have power over us. We'll just go do what we need to do. It's going to backfire on them. Um, really strongly, I believe. Well, let's hope so. And let's talk about a little bit more about, uh, implants and these yahoos. Really Looking for back. a place to get your product to the public? Advertise with us at Spaced Out Radio. At spacedoutradio.com, you can check out our pricing and packages that best suit your budgetary needs. Whether you're a budgeted author or a company looking to expand, our listeners support the products that support spacedoutradio.com. Advertising with us is an effective way to get your message out. Contact us at info at spacedoutradio.com and get your ads out today. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. James Tyson can be found on Facebook at Spaced Out Weekend. You can follow James on Instagram, Spaced Out Weekend, on YouTube, Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Twitter, at James Tyson SOR. And don't forget to sign up to become a space traveler on our website, spacedoutradio.com. It is so nice to be normal. Thank you, Bumblefoot, for reminding us that. It, uh, it is nice to be normal. Speaking of normal. <laughs> okay, Lynn, I think you're normal. You're okay. <laughs> you're, you're just fine. Uh, you know, it's really, it's really funny. It's, um, to focus on one topic with all the stuff that you know about is, is almost impossible. And we're trying to focus on the implants and why, who, why, what, and where. Uh, my, uh, a friend of mine who I do paranormal investigations with, she has been one of these ones where, you know, she'll, she'll wake up, uh, what she described, we did ended up doing a paranormal investigation of her house because she said there was something in her bedroom, like a spirit that lifted her up and moved her around and she'd wake up sideways across the bed and the bed was perfectly made. And the way she described it, it wasn't sounding like it was, uh, something a, a spirit would do, a ghost. And I talked to Dave Scott about it, and as I was talking to Dave, he says, um, does she have, like, blue turquoise nail polish on her toes? And I said, I don't no idea, Dave. And he, he says, because I'm getting that from uh, E.T. who's telling me, yes, she's got an implant in her left leg. Mm. And I phoned her up, or I sent her a text, you know, Kelly, um, I got a weird question for you. Do you have blue... Um, turquoise nail polish on your feet and she just she, oh, I'm busy right now and then she I got that she got that message it was okay I gotta phone you and yeah she did she put him on that she had uh, done her nails like that that night and uh, I said yeah you you have been abducted you are being abducted and you had a uh, you've got an implant on your left leg mm. so now that, that was, was a, that, a physical implant right uh, which one a physical is are you talking a physical. about physical yeah she's got an actual physical implant and uh the beings that were coming together were described as these very tall blonde good looking yeah. yeah might be the nordics yeah i guess they've been taking her and her daughter for a while and dave has this thing where you you set two coins or two cards or or whatever um, by themselves or, or like next to each other on your bed and you put out to the universe, if I'm picked up, could you make sure that I stack them one on top of each other um, 
you know, while I'm, I'm still thinking about it, while I still have my memory of, you know, coming back to the room or have the aliens do it on her behalf. And she, she did that. And one day she woke up and the cards were on top of each other. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, before the break we were talking, it seemed like we were going a little off topic, but actually it does tie back to implants because when people get their implants out, they see the world more clearly and it really does help people wake up to the next level as well as open up their gifts and that's another advantage because, you know, a lot of times you'll get these implants in places like your pineal gland or one of your chakras and it really clamps down on your ability to connect maybe with source for downloads or connect with Mother Earth to ground. And we need to be able to do all of that. You know, we're meant to bring, as the spiritually awakened ones, we're meant to bring the knowledge and wisdom that we're gaining as we awaken and ground it here on on Earth and be in walking embodiments of that. And it's hard to do when you're all implanted and gunked up. And by the way, I want to talk about Another thing I didn't mention, it's not just the entities. There's also inorganic implants. So these can be metal boxes, for example, um, cages, uh, metal plates. They can be weird things like that. Uh, They also can be things like artificial technology. Um, So AI spiders are big, octopuses um, with tentacles running through the body, gunking up things. And um, if anybody's heard about the black goo. Um, yeah. What is that? Black? I've heard about that coming out of rocks and all sorts of stuff. Well, they I mean, the history of that is apparently I think it was dropped up in the Antarctic or something. Um, a meteor hit or something like that or negative ETs brought it here. But then, of course, our government's got a hold of it because they just love anything that's negative and um, and started experimenting with it. And um, and now it's apparently in water systems and it's in lots of different places, but I've had a number of clients find it within their body. And I think that's what CERN is doing is it's opening up portals to the antimatter world. And that's where a lot of the negative stuff come came from in the beginning. There was like a tear um, in space time and these negative entities came here. They were never really supposed to be here on earth. And so I think CERN is exacerbating that by opening up a portal to that world trying to bring in more because they figure, well, we're losing. We'll bring in more of our buddies to enslave humanity, right? So people are finding these these antimatter or opposite universe beings in their bodies that never belonged here. But they do come out. They still, all of this stuff comes out. It's so, it's so amazing. Again, that's how powerful we are. I have not come across an implant yet. Not one that couldn't come out of the body. Not one. So when you're dealing with them, as scary as all this stuff sounds, they're nothing more but than overgrown fleas. If you were to put a flea over under a microscope, it looks pretty darn scary, like a scary alien. You wouldn't think anything of pulling it off your leg. And that's the way you need to look at these beings. Again, they're, they're here feeding on us. This is how amazing and powerful we really are. Yeah, that would, you know, that, that's one of the things that, that frightens me. That's uh, and again, again, that's uh, me not empowering my own self, but uh, not understanding the power that we have over the power that they have. And I think that uh, maybe if I was a little bit uh, more uh, confident, let's say, uh, I, 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 I would be more proactive than reactive. Uh, are you finding a lot of that where people maybe are more pr- reactive? They're not going to do anything until either they're in a complete spiral or then, uh, you know, they're, they're going to end up seeing something face to face in their bedroom like you do. Um, that hasn't been my experience. My experience is once they hear this kind of information, it really resonates and really triggers something deep within them. And so that it's like I always knew it. You know, it's like, I I knew that pain in my whatever, you know, was caused by something. You know, I knew that there was something bothering me. I just knew it. And so I'm actually getting a lot of people, they don't necessarily wait till they've hit rock bottom. I mean, I'm getting those as well. But that's more because they didn't know of anywhere to go before now. Um, But but 
most of the people that come to me are not at that state, not at that, you know, it'd be someone like you, James, where, you know, you know, something may be interfering with your life from time to time and you're kind of curious. And then this talks, this type of conversation resonates with you on some level, like, Hey, you know, I think I'm going to go do that and I'm going to just see what happens. And they're amazed. Like the guy I had this morning, uh, shout out to Steve o- over in London. He was like, this is amazing. I can't do a British accent. He said, this is amazing. He said, I can't believe that how much lighter I feel and how much clearer I feel. Like I was skeptical coming in. This is amazing. So, you know, that's typically the person I get. Okay. That's, and, and that's good. That's, that's the, uh, almost the same reaction someone gets though when they're, you know, they, they do have that, um, a good spirit cleanse too, or you've been to a sweat and you've, you come out of there and you just feel like everything, you know, the world that was piled on your back is gone. So, so I wonder if, if the way you do it is one way and there was so many different other ways that people absolutely. go through these absolutely. things. Absolutely. Absolutely. What you're looking to do is raise your vibration, right? The more we raise our vibration, the more we raise out of vi- out of vibr- um, vibrational range of these beings too. So that does help, and that's why I always suggest you know uh, healthy diet, plenty of sleep, staying away toxic people, you know, getting away from your TV as much as possible. That's nothing but a big programming machine to brainwash you and dumb you down. They've got. Um, frequencies that come in and put you in an alpha state and then sort of brainwash you. That's a really bad one. TV's really bad, particularly the newer TVs they're making now. Whew, bad stuff. Um, So the more you can get a healthy lifestyle and then, yeah, I mean, I felt the same way. You do a nice sauna or cleanse or you go and do some Tibetan bowls or some gongs, although you got to be careful with those because a lot of times if you're relaxed and not protected, you're you're kind of opening yourself up to take in those sounds, and then the being the beings will come in for a good feed. I've had that happen personally. It's not the the bowls themselves, and not the gongs themselves. It's the idea that the beings know that you're going to be just lying there, open to receive, and you're not really protecting yourself. So I always suggest if you're going to go do something like that, just put some protection around yourself before you do it. But yeah, the more you can kind of um, up your your vibration, the better you're going to be feeling. And implant removal is just one step. Um, It's really just one step, but it's a more permanent step, particularly for those, again, who have been afflicted by different pains in the body or psychological problems of, you know, looping thoughts, deep depression, migraines, things that they can't find an answer for and should have no reason to have or they come on suddenly, the implant removal becomes a really powerful step of healing. But it's just one of many. When, when you were um, you were saying about putting yourself in a, a bubble, and like the triple bubble, um, how do you do that? Let's start with the first one. What is it? Take us through your meditation, your thought process in producing that first egg around you. Okay, so so you can close your eyes, right? And, and basically, it's really simple. Use your imagination if you need to, like you're imagining it. If you have a hard time visualizing things, you don't have to see it in your third eye, in your head. But you just imagine that you're putting an egg around yourself. And you're making it gold on the outside. And you're making it filled with golden light. And it's gold is the protector. You know, a lot of people talk about the white light. The white light actually calls everything in, the dark and the light beings. So you'll see uh, white light above the heads of monks, for example, in their auric field um, and channelers. Um, But you got to be careful because, you know, a monk who is in Tibet, who has been meditating for 25 years or 30 years, they really know how to deal with these beings very well, the dark ones. But the average person out there doesn't. And so I wouldn't recommend using white light in their protection. I would use golden light. Gold okay. and golden light. It really does work. So all you do is visualize like you've got an, a giant egg around your body, and it's solid gold on the outside, filled with golden light on the inside. And then what you would do is visualize after that another one, 
around your room, for example. Gold on the outside, golden light on the inside, and a third one around the entire home. Gold on the outside, golden light on the inside. Now, I find that the simplest is best, and I've used all sorts of protection. Lisa Renee out there has her 12th dimensional shield, which I used for years. It works. Um, there's other people that use sacred geometry. Um, that works. So I, you know, when it comes to protection, I always say use the form that you feel more, most comfortable with. It's just when you fill it with the light, make sure it's golden light and gold. Mm-hmm. So gold. And you, do, you, do you breathe it in and then imagine it forming this? Like, like, that's where I'm what kind of where I'm going okay with this. so so yeah so a lot of people think well you can connect to source and pull it down to source or or bring it you know bring golden light through from source down in through your your heart and then blow it out your heart and around your body I don't know I after years of doing this I just sort of skip all that and I just sort of pop it around my 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 being with my own thoughts and I really think that's where we can all get like it does, we don't have to go through all these steps of connecting. We're the ones that can create this for ourselves. But if it helps people, if they're just beginning to imagine maybe that they're pulling the golden light down from source, maybe they're grounding themselves down to Mother Earth. So like there's a, a column of golden light going through the middle of them. And then maybe they can expand that light out into an egg, or maybe they can bring that golden light through their heart, blow it out through their heart. And, and and make the egg go around their body that way, however they want to do it. Okay. And I really encourage my clients to trust their own guidance. You know, sometimes when I'm in the middle of these implant removals, you know, I have a very, I have a protocol as to how I take them through this. But once they get started, a lot of times they'll say, well, you know what, Lynn, I don't want to do that. I want to do this right now. And I'm like, go for it. Go for it. Because... When you learn to trust yourself, you're taking your own power back. And that's exactly what I want you to do. I'm just going to give you a format to start to awaken you to how to do this for yourself. But if you have better ideas along the way and you start doing it differently, right on. You know, because there aren't, there aren't just one way to do these things. Yeah, I think it, it comes down to like Reiki. It's, it's intent. Mm-hmm. Is your intent to build the egg around you a positive intent? And are you, are you, you know, you're concentrating properly on it? You're bringing in what you truly believe is the good. Right. And I do set an intention. So if I build that protection, of course, right now my intention is so second nature. I don't think about it. So thank you for saying that, James. But, but yes, you know, you probably want to set the intention that only, you know, positive um, energies, only positive um, guidance can come through this egg, but anything negative has to stay outside. Yeah. Anything or anything negative, um, you know, has to leave your field. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's odd in the way you say it, too. Because, no, I shouldn't say it's odd in the way you say it. It's, it's odd in the way I hear it. But you, uh, when we talk about the intent and uh, to build ourselves protection uh, it it's one of those things that I I do probably every night when I when I'm sleep when I'm just before bed and that's where I do my meditations the in your case or in I guess in a lot of people's cases they they will um, the intent itself is 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 something that is deep down and you're pulling it out from within and to do that in that first egg around you then the second egg around your bedroom and then the third one around your home and if those people that get crazy and go out and do the whole neighborhood but the um pulling that in a lot of times i'm out cold before i get half the egg built you ever find that oh for sure yeah. and those are usually implants that are trying to put you out cold Oh, those little weasels. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be a lot of interference. We haven't talked about that. Um, well, we did a little bit, I think, at one point with the Skype line. But, yes, that's one of the things. The implants in the head, and they usually put a lot in the head, that's one of their favorite tricks is the minute you try to do something positive for yourself like that, 
they're going to, oh, all of a sudden you can't keep your eyes open, you're sleepy, or all of a sudden you forget. When I first started building, the first shield I ever built was Lisa Renee's golden um, 12th dimensional shield. There, you can find it on YouTube. Just look under 12th dimensional shield. And um, she's got a number of steps, and it is a really good shield, but it had quite a number of steps, and I couldn't get through the first two or three, and then, boom, I'm out like a light. I've come to find out that's because these entities are, are doing that because they don't want you to shield yourself. That's another reason I chose to make it more simple because I really don't believe anything has to be complicated. I'm to the point now where I can just in, set the intention. Implants aren't coming into me today. And they don't come in. But that takes a certain level of mastery. It's kind of like learning karate, right? You get your certain belts. And, and you know, by the time you get to the, to the top echelon of karate, you're doing a lot of stuff second nature and, and that, you know, you had to teach the first level in step-by-step -step fashion. Well, it's not dissimilar to this skill either. After a while, it becomes so second nature, you just get out out of the shower and say, that's it, I'm shielding, boom, done, set intention, no, no implants, and you're good for the day. I now clean myself about once a week. Okay. I mean, you start to get immune to them as well, so when they start coming in, they just don't affect you the same way as you keep pulling them out, and less will want to start coming in because they know you're going to pull them out in less than 24 hours if you're doing this every day, and they, they aren't even going to get a good meal off of you, so they're going to go bother somebody else. So, yeah, it, it, you really start taking command of your realm. Yeah. And it ends up empowering people in so many different ways. Now, we, I'm going to throw this out just for the listener with a few minutes left to go in the show. But uh, we talked about, you talked about the gold light and just throw a tease out there at, um, you know, talking about when you're passing, if you're going to the light. I think you told me about the difference between the white and the gold. Right. Well, you know, the white light tunnel is the trap of reincarnation that everybody talks about, you know, when people die and they're like, come to the white light, come to the tunnel. And people have said that they go through the tunnel and then they go up to a council and they get told that they didn't do things right. And so they have to come back down here and do it again. And then they get this soul gets reincarnated. And that is a big, you know, trap. That's the archon trap of this planet. When we talk about the planet being enslaved, you as a soul should be able to, to die, so to speak, and leave this planet and go anywhere in, you know, the multiverse that you want to go to in any level. You could go up and become, you know, a ninth dimensional or tenth dimensional spirit, um, not a physical form, or you could go to another planet and become a Pleiadian, but you should have the freedom to do what you want to do. And we don't have that here. So that's the reincarnation cycle. Now, some people have said, look for the golden staircase or look for the golden light, and that will actually lead you out of the matrix. Other people have written that don't even look for any light. If you see any light at all, that's a trick to get you to go somewhere. I, I don't know. I haven't died yet, but I know I'm not going to go to the white light. Oh, okay. So, so you haven't died yet. Well, I mean, I haven't died in this lifetime yet. So, so I haven't died in this life yet? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah, and I don't remember the past lives, unfortunately. So I guess when I finally get to that point, I'm going to have to make a decision. And hopefully I hold on to don't go to the white light. <laughs> so what, what is your um, thinking of what's about to happen? You, we've got, we have these terrible things going on over the mid, Middle East. We have a bizarre set of circumstances uh, surrounding an election of someone who's going to be leader of the free world with quite a, a large group of a large military. And we have the economy in China going f through the floor and, and immigration going sideways all over the place. It, putting on your, your intuitive hat, you know, uh, what do you think Lynn is going to be the outcome here in another um, well, let's say six to eight months. Well, what I would first say is how much um, that we see on TV do we even know is true? I mean, there's videos coming out all over the place, the, the Brussels false flag, for example, where, you know, so much of this is now, I saw a video the other day, oh my gosh, they've got technology where you could have 
Putin or Trump talking and they can have a guy there like manipulating in the 3D and then hook it up to the video and then it looks like they're making different facial expressions real time. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. So like you're talking on TV and instead your mouth is making all these weird expressions, your eyebrows are going crazy and you're like, wow, that guy's really whacked out when that's not exactly what you were doing at all on the real deal. So we're looking at so much. This is why I got rid of my TV because it's, it's completely false these days. And they're creating these scenarios around the world that, oh, there's tragedy here and we've got to be in fear here. That's part of the arconic network of constant fear, getting us into lower vibration, gets us away from who we really are, gets us to live in a very stressful fearful environment, which is not what we we're made to do. So I don't even know how much of that is real. I mean, think of all the disasters that they've perpetrated over the years, you know, different epidemic virus breakouts, um, Fukushima, all these things that are supposed to kill us. And we're still here and you don't even hear those stories anymore. So I don't know how much of it is propaganda. I'm not saying that bad stuff doesn't happen around the world. I'm not saying that at all. But to the degree that they would like to tell us, to the point where this planet is just going down the tubes, some things are. I think our money system will. I think that will break down because it's just unsustainable. But I don't think these horrible disasters that they always put fear in us about are going to happen to the degree that they say. Yeah, it's, it, it, I think we've, we've been brought up in a uh, world where we're always preparing for the worst. Um, and we're we're also at a time where there isn't like I think in the last five years it's been the point in history where there's the fewest wars and the fewest people killed and it it's just made it sounds like the whole world's about to blow up but it's actually been the most peaceful time for what is eleven hundred years yeah. But, yeah, and, and but, you go to different places around the world and people that were in these disaster areas saying it was not that bad. Like, they exaggerated. So, you know... But, the, but that's the, you know, we want that. We want reality TV. We want to drive by the car accident and see the blood. We're, we're attracted to the disaster. We want, uh, we listen to news that is, you know... Uh, like my wife was a uh, a newspaper reporter, and if it bleeds, it leads. You put the devastating stuff on the front page, and you put the fluffy bunnies on the last page. And if everybody threw out their television set tomorrow, we would heal from that. We have been conditioned as a society to to be into that. We would not normally, as a human race, be into that at all. Nah, my my kids if they got rid of the TV. They'd still be staring at their iPhones. The <laughs> No, but I mean, in terms of all the drama, the reality show, oh, yeah. it's, you know, the Kardashians, all of that, yeah, you know, the way, all of that the, is conditioning. The Kardashians not- who are famous for nothing. But right. it's honestly, you know, I've been a policeman for a crap load of a long time, and uh, it's not that bad. People, no. you know, it, it isn't a bad world. No. We, uh, we would deal with like 2% of the population are bad, and they will always be bad. Two percent of the population will always be perfect and angelic and never do anything wrong. And I police the ninety-six percent that, given an opportunity to get away with something, they will, like speed, cheat on your taxes, steal a chocolate bar, you know that kind of thing. Those are the ones you kind of have to stand there and go, oh, "Really?" That two percent, you know, they they do take up a lot of time, but uh, the two percent percent of the negative people. But eventually, you know, you, you go home and as long as you don't think that 2% is more than 2%, it's it's a perf- perfectly good life that we're living here. And humans, by and large, are good people. And they would have us believe otherwise. And so that's part of the work that I'm so proud to do is it it helps people see in a different way and to see past all of the propaganda. When you open your gifts, you see past the illusion. And yeah. when you see past the illusion, you're free. Yeah, and it's it's a good thing to be free. And, you know, when we're all free, it's a better thing because we're all connected. 
and mm-hmm. it's uh, you know I feel s- sorry for the people who are on the other side of the planet that I can't help, but that's their that's that's them, and uh, we, so we are connected. I can only deal with what I'm dealing with in my life and my energy and my vibration and trying to get that higher. And Lynn, we have come to the end of the show. No one is going to hear my music coming out of here because it's on a different computer. But tomorrow, (laughs) (laughs) with Two Mediums Large, you will hear that. And I want to thank Lynn Williams. Please follow her. Look her up on uh, Facebook and uh, keep in touch because uh, Lynn and Pay attention to what's coming on on Spaced Out Weekend and Spaced Out Radio because Lynn will be back and we will be touching on a lot of different things from the gold light to the white light difference, uh, more of the um, ET um, issues that we're running into nationally, uh, worldwide, as well as the government. And uh, Lynn will tell us about those things that have happened from men in black to the helicopters over top of her home. And uh, it's interesting. Lynn's uh, experienced a lot. Again, Lynn Williams, thank you very much. Thank you. And if people want to reach me, they can reach me at lwilliams2002 at verizon.net. One more time. lwilliams2002 at verizon.net. Or my Facebook is lynn.williams.129. Lynn.Williams.129 on Facebook. And uh, if you didn't get any of that, just replay the last part of the show and you'll (laughs) you'll get it. And uh, we'll match it up. So, again, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks uh, from our friends at uh, Paranormal Into the Night, Paranormal Forums, and uh, the Combined Forces of the French Legume for tuning in to another Spaced Out Weekend. Good night, everybody.